Balake. Where is Balake at? My name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is here. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining me for some more SPTV. Today, we're talking about Tom Cruise, the guy who said people ask him sometimes, have you ever even met an SP? <laughs> and then he goes, <laughs> have I met an SP? Maybe one day it'll be like that. Well, yeah, Tom, maybe one day it will be like that. C coming from the guy who all three of your wives, your ex-wives have, at least according to you, turned out to actually be SPs. That is a, a very <laughs> a remarkable, strange, and distinguished batting average Tom Cruise is running there. Batting 343 on SP wives. I'm not sure I know any other Scientologist who can claim such a record. So this sort of leads us into the reporting that's come out this week, kind of reconfirming the fact that, yes, Tom Cruise has indeed completely disowned and abandoned his daughter, Suri. All the reports about this center around Scientology, which is the reason why I'm discussing it on this channel. And I think my take on this is going to surprise a lot of you guys, because even when the press talks about this issue uh, in a way that some probably perceive as piling on Tom, I still think they're letting him off the hook. I still think they're letting him off the hook because a lot of the media that talk about this don't actually understand that technically speaking, Tom Cruise, based on the rules of Scientology, would not have been required to disconnect from Surrey. Now, that doesn't mean Scientology is not responsible for the disconnection. I believe that Tom's deep-rooted belief in Scientology is responsible for him disconnecting from Surrey Cruise. But technically speaking, according to the letter of the law, Tom Cruise was not required to disconnect from Surrey Cruise. I'm going to do my best to try to explain how these seemingly uh, contradictory facts can be reconciled and, and explain how they are in fact true. Okay, let's look. This is one of the one of the um, articles I've seen that I can show you guys without a million ads popping up constantly as I have it on screen. So let's take a look at this. Uh, guys, and I'll get to the super chats after I finish the main body of this video. Tom Cruise still has no part in 16-year-old daughter Surrey's life. Tom Cruise continues to be estranged. I'll try to highlight this stuff. Tom Cruise continues to be estranged from his daughter Surrey. Page six can confirm... A source tells us exclusively that the Mission Impossible star has not seen the 16-year-old daughter in a very long time and is not a part of her life. Representatives for Tom did not immediately return Page Six's request for comment. Now, uh, to me, the fact that Tom's team does that just doesn't respond to these articles, to me, is as much of a confirmation as we could ever expect to get from Tom's camp that these reports of him having completely disowned and disconnected from Surrey are in fact true. I mean, these are incredibly reputationally damaging things to be said about Tom Cruise. Uh, the easiest thing in the world would be for Tom's team to come out and say, uh, this is categorically false and these are lies and da 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 da. You, you would think that Tom's team would even have an agreement with Katie's team that he would be allowed to publicly deny such accusations. I mean, they're incredibly reputationally damaging. I, I'm curious to if you guys agree with me on that. I imagine you'd, you would. The fact that his team just over and over and over doesn't even comment on it, um, it really makes me wonder what that post-marital agreement, what that divorce agreement, that separation agreement between Tom and Katie said, because my God, the fact that he's not even allowed to, that, that they haven't even agreed that he's allowed to deny this stuff is incredible. When according to all reports, he actually does still pay child support. So, so there is an agreement there that Tom seems to be sticking to. Um, okay, let's keep going. Uh, Tom admitted in transcripts from his 2012 defamation lawsuit against Bauer Media. By the way, I believe that lawsuit was regarding reports that Tom had abandoned Surrey and had not seen her. He admitted in transcripts from that defamation lawsuit against Bauer Media that he had not seen Surrey for three months right after he and Holmes called it quits. Uh, 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 uh. And then it quotes him as saying, listen, when there's a divorce, things change. It's not an ideal scene. It's not an ideal situation. During a deposition for that same $50 million lawsuit, which was ultimately settled, the Top Gun star confessed that his ties to Scientology had played 
a pivotal role in why he was separated from his kids. When asked whether Holmes had left him in part to protect Surrey from Scientology, Tom said, yes, that was one of the assertions. Um, okay, so check this out. This gets a little bit to the heart of what I'm talking about here. In 2016, the controversial church was once again blamed for keeping Tom and Surrey apart because according to its rules, members are forbidden from associating with non-believers. Okay, so real quick. That is uh, an oversimplification and a mischaracterization of the rules of Scientology. It is not true that you're not allowed to associate with non-believers. It's not even true that you're not allowed to associate with former members. The accurate statement would be you're not allowed to associate with former members who have been declared a suppressive person. And I think it's very important to make a distinction here between the actual reality of the situation and the way it gets casually discussed in the media. There's no doubt in my mind that Tom thinks of Katie Holmes as a suppressive person and treats her accordingly. There's no doubt in my mind that Tom Cruise thinks of Nicole Kidman as a suppressive person and treats her accordingly. However, K uh, Nicole Kidman has never been declared a suppressive person. Nicole Kidman's children have never disconnected from her. We have heard stories. And I I'm switching subjects from, from Katie Holmes to Nicole Kidman. We have heard stories of Tom Cruise's kids when they were little telling some Scientology handlers who, who have since left that their mother was a suppressive person. Ergo, they were being told their mother was a suppressive person. That is different than being declared a suppressive person. I'm just telling you that it's a difference. You can be told that someone is sort of a suppressive person for a variety of reasons, and therefore you have to have a fair, fair roads, fair weather. Scientologists, we usually commonly say good roads, good weather, but the reference actually says fair roads, fair weather. I'm going to say good roads, good weather, though, because that's what people are used to hearing. A good roads, good weather relationship. Nothing but sweetness and light and good news and positive statements and everything's glorious and wonderful. Um, uh, never say anything that would create antagonism or provoke antagonism. Never respond to any antagonistic or negative comments. So I just really want to make this distinction. There's a difference between sort of casually, colloquially um, referring to someone as an SP and saying someone is a declared suppressive person and therefore disconnection is going to be enforced. I promise you, if Nicole Kidman's children had disconnected from her, she would not be keeping her mouth shut about Scientology. <laughs> uh, in, in press interviews, Nicole says, I don't talk about Scientology out of respect for my children who are Scientologists. If her children had disconnected from her and Scientology was the reason why she would not be keeping her mouth shut about Scientology out of respect for her Scientologist children. Um, plus, Isabella Cruz has uh, gone back to referring to herself as Isabella Kidman Cruz publicly. Um, and, and, and I just I'm, I'm sort of I feel like I'm repeating myself way too much here, but I challenge anybody to go through the last, I don't know, 15 or 20 years of media. I can't remember how long it's been since Tom and Nicole got divorced. I challenge you to find one instance of, of anyone even reporting or saying that Nicole's kids had actually disconnected from her. Uh, and yet we know they were being told that she was an SP. So I'm just trying, to, just trying to really connect these dots on how these things can be true at the same time. One of the reasons Nicole was considered an SP, well, she wasn't that interested in Scientology. Remember, Nicole's not the one who left Tom. Tom's the one who initiated the divorce with Nicole. And yet her kids were still being told that she was an SP. She wasn't really into the whole Scientology thing. She did it anyway just to keep Tom happy. Also, Nicole's father was a uh, psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And just being connected, just, have, just having a father figure who is a psychiatrist, even in Scientology, it doesn't actually make you an SP. It does put you into a gray area. I guess – I'm being very long-winded about this, guys. I apologize. I guess it sort of comes down to the fact of we don't really, really know why Tom's kids were being told that Nicole – was an SP, but we do know that they were being told and we do know that they never disconnected, even though without question, their relationship with Tom is better and closer than their relationship with Nicole. And that is without a doubt due to Scientology. Okay, now let's switch over to talking about Katie Holmes. <clears throat> Divorcing Tom Cruise is not a suppressive act in Scientology. 
<laughs> Just divorcing Tom Cruise and leaving him does not get one declared an SP. Leaving Scientology doesn't even get one declared an SP. Publicly disavowing and leaving Scientology gets one declared an SP. I would be hard pressed to tell you, other than offending Tom Cruise and embarrassing him, and make him look like a little bitch, what Katie Holmes did that would actually make her a suppressive person in the, in the eyes of a normal Scientologist. Maybe I'm being very naive and whatever, but you know, for all you former Scientologists in the comments, let me know what you think. Live chat, replay, whatever. I want, I want to hear. What is it to a true believing Scientologist that Katie Holmes did that would make her uh, a bona fide SP? Not a two and a half percent or SP, but just actually a, a declared suppressive person. Because you'll notice Katie Holmes has never said one single bad word about Scientology. And that tends to be the crux of whether you are truly considered an SP or not. And um, especially when we are talking about situations of, of, of her parents, guardians of minor children, one's a Scientologist, one is not. <clears throat> And I'm, I'm trying to shy away from making absolute statements because I realize circumstances and situations are different for different organizations, different people. Everyone has their own experiences. According to Scientology, you do not have to disconnect from one of your children just because they are connected to someone else who's no longer in Scientology. If Katie Holmes was publicly speaking out against Scientology to the press, yes, 100%, Tom would have to disconnect from her and Surrey. But she never has. And you have to believe, meaning I have to believe, I have to assume and believe that her keeping her mouth shut about Scientology and about Tom Cruise is part of their separation, their divorce agreement. And is, I have to assume part of some other financial arrangement. I, I have no inside knowledge. I could be totally wrong some other financial arrangement, even beyond just child support. Because otherwise, why would she keep her mouth shut? Do you see what I mean? Why would she keep her mouth shut if she has full custody of Surrey and there isn't some other behind the scenes arrangement that requires her to keep her mouth shut? Um, okay, so let's go back to this article and let me make sure I haven't gotten all, totally off the beaten path here. In 2016, the controversial church was once again blamed for keeping Tom and Surrey apart because according to its rules, members are forbidden from associating with non-believers. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify that statement. Uh, but, but this is what I mean when I say the, uh, the, the, the media, even when writing an embarrassing article about Tom, is actually letting him off the hook. He's not forbidden from having an association with Katie just because she's a non-believer. Tom has decided himself that he's basically going to set a new standard, a new gold standard of what it means to be a true believing Scientologist who's a properly applying KSW, that he's going to disconnect from his daughter even though he doesn't actually have to. That's where I'm going with this. Okay, let's see what else they say in this article. Since neither Surrey nor Holmes were Scientologists, Tom reportedly could not have a relationship with either one. Totally false. Tom could if he wanted to. Uh, okay, and uh, 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 I want to address what I know some Scientologists are thinking. Let's just say, let's for the sake of argument, let's say Katie was keeping her mouth shut about Scientology, keeping her mouth shut about Tom Cruise, but for whatever reason was an actual in writing on the goldenrod declared suppressive person, and they have a and they share custody of a minor child. In order for Tom technically would still be able to maintain a relationship with Surrey, however he would be ineligible to get auditing while that connection existed. Even that would not actually be that big of a deal, to be perfectly honest, because Tom Cruise is already OT8. Who gives a shit if Tom has to put his auditing on hold until his daughter is 18 years old? Now, it's easy for me to say who gives a shit. To a true believing Scientologist, that's kind of a big deal. Uh, you know, you kind of a scarlet letter on your head if you're declared PTS. PTS means potential trouble source. It's what Scientology calls someone who has a connection to a suppressive person. Being PTS doesn't get you kicked out of Scientology. Being PTS means you can't get auditing or do courses until the situation is resolved. But I still go back to what I said before. Tom's already had most of all of the auditing that there is to get in Scientology. 
if he really wanted to, it's not like if Tom chose to maintain a relationship with Surrey and put his auditing on hold, it's not like he'd be in the minds of a Scientologist sacrificing his eternal spiritual freedom. Tom's already done the whole goddamn bridge. Uh, there's no more to do. And so that's why I go for Tom to go, no, I'm going to prioritize my status as a Scientologist and I'm going to disown my daughter uh, just because it's the right thing to do. He, he, that's that's on Tom. That's not on Scientology. That's straight on Tom. And yes, it comes from his belief in Scientology. But let's put the responsibility squarely where it should be on the shoulders of Tom Cruise. All right, back to the article. Um, okay, so someone is quoted as saying, uh, "This is his loss, his issue, his problem. He must be really brainwashed." Well, yes, one hundred percent. Former Scientologist Lee Remini told The Post in 2020 that Scientology considers Holmes a suppressive person, which is an enemy, and therefore Tom believes he can't be connected to Surrey. Now, this is very interesting. This is sort of where uh, the rubber meets the road or where two worlds collide between how Scientologists colloquially speak with each other juxtaposed against the actual written letter of the law in Scientology. Leah Remini was still in Scientology when Katie made her great escape and blew, blew the marriage, blew Scientology and took Surrey with her. Leah Remini was still in Scientology. She was still at the Celebrity Center. Leah Remini has a personal firsthand experience of her, her people in Scientology telling her Katie's an SP. <laughs> so Leah can uh, accurately and from firsthand experience say, quote, Scientology considers Holmes a suppressive person, which is an enemy. And that is a true statement. And yet that is still different than saying Katie Holmes has literally been officially declared a suppressive person. And this is why I wanted to do this video. <laughs> These two things can both be true at the same time. Tom Cruise can be treating Katie Holmes like an SP, even though technically, according to the letter of the law, he wouldn't have to disconnect unless she was officially in writing declared a suppressive person. I promise you guys, I'm not just being charitable here. I'm not trying to you know, uh, make any excuses for Scientology. These distinctions do matter in the world of Scientology. Uh, and you see every word Leah Remini said here is perfectly true. And what I'm saying right now doesn't contradict anything in here. She goes... Scientology considers Holmes a suppressive person. And therefore, Tom believes he can't be connected to Surrey. That's different than saying he couldn't be connected if he wanted to. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, let's keep going here. Um, the King of Queens alum, who has been fighting to publicly expose the alleged misdeeds of Scientology, speculated of Tom, I'm sure his master plan is to wait until Surrey gets older so that he can lure her into Scientology and away from her mother. So I, uh, oh, trying to get back to my normal view here. So that is likely to be true. There's a problem with that strategy, though, or at least if that is his strategy, there's a problem with how Tom's been implementing his strategy, which makes me doubt that it's really a strategy. Good luck approaching your daughter after she turns 18 and trying to lure her away from her mother and into Scientology after you've completely abandoned and disowned her for the last 10, 12 years of her life. I, I just, I'm not good at math, guys. I grew up in a cult. I can't really remember when they got divorced. And I don't know how old Surrey is. Uh, did it say 16? Anyway, I'm just, whatever, guys. <laughs> you cannot really expect such a plan to work. And so therefore, it's probably not the plan. The reason I think talking about the Tom Cruise, Surrey Cruise thing is important. Uh, it's not just because it's sensational or, or tabloidy. This really is the most, dis uh, for, I have said, regardless of how somebody wants to define a cult and a religion academically or any of that stuff, I don't give a shit about any of that stuff. To me, Scientology is a cult as long as it destroys families. Scientology is a cult as long as it in, in, enforces familial disconnection and destroys families. Tom Cruise willingly disconnecting and disowning his daughter, even though he didn't actually have to, according to the letter of the law, is one of the most disgusting examples 
of not only how Scientology has destroyed Tom Cruise, but how Tom Cruise is aiding and abetting Scientology's destruction of families. Tom Cruise disconnecting from his daughter, even though he didn't have to, sends a loud message to all other Scientologists. You damn well better disconnect from your family members when they get officially declared as a oppressive person because I disconnected from mine even when they didn't. It is so damn disgusting. And the journalists, entertainment journalists, if they really call themselves journalists, um, this is the most disgusting thing nobody has the balls to confront Tom Cruise about. And it comes down that the problem with this, you know, media wise is that it comes down to access. Any journalist almost guaranteed to, to interview Tom Cruise has to agree in advance not to ask about Scientology. Uh, I mean, th that goes without saying. So any journalist who sort of was, uh, tried to pull a gotcha on Tom and ask him this, not only would never get access to Tom Cruise again, but would probably be fired from their job and never get hired by any other entertainment journalism platforms again. Because let's say a journalist for, I don't know, Entertainment Tonight is interviewing Tom about the next Mission Impossible movie, and they ask him something about Surrey. I guarantee Tom's team not only would uh, retaliate against that journalist, but would retaliate against Entertainment Tonight. You know, and I'm sure Tom's reps not only would never send Tom to interview with them again, but would never send any other celebrity represented by those same reps. Like it really is. Um, <laughs> It's probably impossible to ever expect a journalist is actually going to ask Tom Cruise about this. That's why it's all the more important that people like me do videos about this shit. Because if the media is not going to confront Tom Cruise on enabling Scientology's destruction of families, then I guess we'll do it. Uh, and that's okay. You know, that's okay. We don't, we don't have to care about access to Tom Cruise. So um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say on this. I'm going to quickly go up, guys, and make sure I didn't miss any super chats. I do see some, so let me tackle them. Trying to scroll without kicking myself out of my own live stream, which I tend to do. Okay, Lori says, I'll start this out by saying Tom Cruise is a scuzz. Yeah, Tom Cruise is a scuzz. Because if you're the most famous, one of the most famous people on earth, one of the wealthiest people in the business, and you cannot find and keep a girlfriend or a wife. Just imagine how horrible you are behind closed doors. Oh, my God. My, it's really hard to fathom. <laughs> okay. Calvin. Calvin Supersticker. Thank you very much, Calvin. Feel free to ask a question next time if you'd like. Happy to answer one. Brenda. Brenda Farrow. Did Scientology make Tom Cruise's movies? No, but I'll tell you what. If they were smart, they would. Like if Miscavige wanted to, like if Miscavige really wanted to make some money, he would set up some other sort of shell corporation and fund it with Scientology money and uh, make all those Tom Cruise money profits. I mean, that might pose some uh, tax problem implications for Scientology. But so what do I know, guys? I mean, I'm I just grew up in a cult. But but I do know that no, Scientology didn't make uh, doesn't make or finance Tom's movies. Thank you, Brenda. Okay, Joe. Uh, the only person Tom Cruise ever loved is Tom Cruise. Keep up the good work. SP TV crew. Thank you very much, Joe. I appreciate it. Uh, Maxwell Edison's mom, Tom's three wife, dodged a firearm projectile. Well, did they, though? <laughs> did they? It seems like dodging is the opposite of what they did. But I do get I do get your point. The fact that they are no longer still married to him um, have dodged dodged firearm projectiles. Absolutely. Thank, well, uh, thank you, Maxwell Edison's mom. Batgoat. Hey, a Ron, are there SPs out there? Are there SPs? <laughs> Maybe one day it'll be like that bat goat. Maybe one day. But if you're ever looking for some SPs, just uh, jump on over here to SP TV. We have no shortage of them. Thank you, bat goat. The Soper star. Surrey is better off without him. It's very sad, but her mom chose correctly. Tom's reputation is going to be in the dumpster with this news. Thank you, Soberstar. It's true. On the one hand, I'm, I'm shaming Tom very heavily for having disconnected from his daughter. On the other hand, it's probably best that he did. So um, interesting little interesting little um, contradiction there. Thank you, Soberstar. Soberstar. Dave Owens. Was Penelope Cruz ever in Scientology? Dave, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get confused right now as I, as I think back to that. Here's why I'm getting confused. The Scientology organization in... Was it Madrid? The Scientology organization in Madrid was fast-tracked and funded. Um, Miscavige dipped into the reserves to fund the renovation of that org, specifically because 
Tom wanted that org uh, suitable for Penelope Cruz and her family to come in and do Scientology. What I cannot remember is, was that just wishful thinking on Tom's part that he thought it would be easier to get Pen to Penelope and her family into Scientology if there was a beautiful facility for them to go to? Or was that actually a function of her having already gotten into Scientology? As I sit here right now, I do not believe Penelope ever got into Scientology. That doesn't mean he didn't get her to like dabble with some introductory services or anything. Mike Rinder would really know for sure. Thank you, Dave. Always appreciate it. Always love seeing you in here. Okay, M. L. Henricks. I think Katie wouldn't speak on Scientology, Tom Cruise, to protect Surrey's feelings, and it's still her dad. Love your channel. You know, I do understand where you're coming from, but if you're Surrey Cruise and your dad has abandoned you, are you really sitting there thinking of him as your dad? Are you really going to be hurt if someone says a negative word about him? I guess there's, I, I can see it both ways, to be perfectly honest. Thank you, ML. Valerie Boljack. Surrey was a tribute to Scientology. Nothing else. That's possible. That is possible. Um, I really would love to hear from some people like deep in Tom's inner circle at that time, whether there was some hope that Tom's kid would be in the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard. I don't think after Surrey was born, anybody would have still thought that. Because I think just in a weird Scientology, like a way of thinking that doesn't have to make much sense. I don't think anybody would expect L. Ron Hubbard to be reincarnated in a female body. It shouldn't matter. But according to Scientology, it really shouldn't matter. I just don't think Scientologists would expect it. Anyway, pure speculation, but it, it would be really interesting to, to hear <laughs> to hear what people were saying to Katie. Hopefully one day, maybe when Surrey's 18 and older, Katie will be allowed to speak out. Even then, maybe it's just asking for too much trouble to, to do something like that, but we can hope. All right, Pastor, Pastor Nan, keep speaking the truth about this organization. Pastor Nan, thank you for that very generous super chat, and you know that I will. SPTV is here to stay. All right, everybody, that is all I got. That is also all the Super Chats. Thank you, everybody. I got much more coming today, so stay tuned, guys. Hit that like button for me if you don't mind. Uh, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. All that stuff helps out the channel and everything. Uh, thanks for uh, sticking in there, hanging in there with me, you guys, and watching until the very end. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, yeah, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!